Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Dorothy, I'm a professional astrologer. You can find me on the web at nhastrologer.com. And there on that website, if you were to go to the homepage and go ahead and sign up to be on my newsletter email list, each month I draw three people to get a free 20-minute astrology session with me. Now, I also have online classes and a mentorship program for one-on-one -on -one studying, so we do that over the internet as well. And I have four spaces left. left, so if you're interested in a private mentorship program for six months, let me know. All right, today I want to talk about February, so now that the advertising is over, okay? So with February, we have a few things going on. Of course, we know it as the month of love, just because Valentine's is in here. Um, some of the things that are going on this month that are just general for everybody is um, the thing I want to focus on first off is on February 13th, between the 13th and the 15th. This is when Mercury is finally back to the position that it was in the zodiac belt um, on the day that it went retrograde back in January, on January 5th. So think back to January 5th, what was going on for you. That's when Mercury had moved into, Capric into, um, into Aquarius. It stayed in that zodiac sign for just a few days and then retrograded back. Now on February 13th to the 15th, this is when Mercury's finally past that, that hump, finally over that area where, sh where he was retrograde for a long time. So we're gonna have some movement that Mercury in Aquarius is definitely high thinking, um, high, it can be high energy, but it can also be somebody where we get something into our head, we can, can really chew on it for a long time. Fixed air is what Aquarius is. Mercury is that thinking mind. So it is a air planet, naturally. So when it is connected, when it is in that sign of Aquarius, we're gonna be having some interest in any of the things that Aquarius rules. So, of course, astrology is one of them. That'll be on the top of my list, of course. Anything that's technologically, um, well, anything in that category, right? So, February 13th to the 15th, Mercury finally gets over that hump of where it was January 5th when it went retrograde. So that means we get to move through some stuff, okay? We get to start really moving into the Aquarian energy and that unique piece of communicating. And February 14th, of course, it's right in the middle of this. So what goes on on February 14th? And this is energy that we're all going to play into. On February 14th, the moon's in the sign of Taurus. That's a great place for the moon to be um, on the 14th of February because the moon in Taurus is all about, you know, sensual tastes and tense, sensual smells and anything that is just lo lovely and luscious and beautiful. Now it makes a sextile to, let me look at my notes, to Neptune, right, in the evening of February 13th, so Saturday night, February 13th, most people would probably be going out to dinner and doing their romantic-y things on Saturday night, the day before Valentine's, and this is true, and this is what we get when we have on Saturday night. If you want to go out and have this romantic, you know, date and just have a nice time, it's going to be that. We have all of the things, all of the cards are in place for a, just a romantic evening, just in and of itself, kind of put parentheses around it, and that's it. After that, though, we have no other aspects that are cooperating with this romantic piece. So if you're going out on a first date on this night, there's going to be way too much pressure. All right. If you feel like just having a you know a one-time date with somebody, then that's this is what the energy of the night's about. That's perfect, especially for those of of us out there who are single. You know, go out, have a date, that's cool. But just know there's no Saturn. The Saturn aspects of the day just do not support a long-term relationship. Now, if you're in a stable relationship and you're just going out for fun because that's what you do on Valentine's Day, then, then this won't affect you quite as much. But it will be a nice date night, especially for married people who have not had an opportunity to get out and play in a long time because of children. All right, so go out, have fun. Just know that Saturday night, if you're going out for Valentine's, even if you're not going out for Valentine's, if you're going out Saturday night, it's just a night to have fun, enjoy good food, good drink, good company, and just know it's a great memory that you're making. 
Um, and that's what it will be. That will be it. It doesn't have to go any further than that. So it sounds like a great night to have, a, have fun and have a party. So I'm going to leave. That's the general piece. So now I'm going to get on to a little more specific things for each of the zodiac signs. So that's next. Okay, Virgo, let's get started right off. We have on February 5th, Venus in Capricorn conjunct Pluto in Capricorn. It goes on in your solar fifth house. And so what do you have going on here? This is actually the house of love relationships. I am going to focus on relationships this month and most of the forecasting here just because it's that month of February with Valentine's and all of that. So what we have when these two are together like this, especially in your fifth, your fifth house of your solar fifth house. So that's the house of love affairs and affairs of the heart. <clears throat> so it doesn't mean people are cheating. It just can be, of course, but that's not necessarily the meaning. This is just, you know, love affairs where you feel love for others and that deep in, incredible passion for somebody. And it really is that physical passion. Lots of times really, that's where relationships start. They start with a physical attraction and then you uh, learn more about the person uh, once that connection is made. And since this is going on in that sector for you guys, this is something that you could be focusing on. It's kind of interesting. I mean, I like it. And so all of this will come together in the next 10 minutes. So there is personal drama. It can be personal drama. Now, if you're not a dramatic person, it doesn't mean that you're not going to see it around you. I'm not a dramatic person, so if this was happening in my fifth house, I know what I could do is I could use this and just feel very passionate about something, about somebody or something. Now, in a new relationship, having passion, especially that love passion, is a great feeling and a great thing to do, so you might have that. If you're in a long-term relationship currently and you need to spice it up a little bit, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to do that. All right? So... It's not necessarily when we say emotional drama, it doesn't necessarily mean things have to explode, but we can take emotional drama and flip that and change it into passion and what I'm passionate about. Now, we have something else that's a little more difficult. Because this one can be difficult, but it doesn't have to be. This next one is just difficult. We need to be extremely flexible with this next aspect. It's on the same day on February 5th. Mars is in Scorpio, and that's deep, intense investigation in your soul or third house. That's the communication with those around you, right? That's like the Mercury energy. In hard aspect, quincunx, it's called to Uranus and Aries. It wants freedom, independence, all that freedom-loving energy. It's in your solar eighth house of transformation. So we have lots of transformation going on here, and this is transformation. And even when you think you've made a decision about something, that decision, the information you receive back, means that you have to change your mind again. So this creates some frustration. That Queen Kong's energy is about making adjustments, but consistently making adjustments. And so Aries and Scorpio are all about that transformation. So adjusting to transform. All right. I know that sounds kind of weird, but just kind of go with those words and just allow them to sink in and allow that process just to to sit with you for a little while. Write those keywords down and just know that this is what the early part of February is all about. We do have a new moon on February 8th and there is a separate video for that, that icon, the eye icon in the corner over here. And um, if you click on that anytime during the video, you can see the drop down menu that presents um, all my other videos and all other links that I wanna talk about. Plus they're below in the um, the text box below this video so you can go see that new moon video when it comes up and if you're a subscriber to this channel you'll be notified when it's up so the new moon in Aquarius just a brief bit on it is all about being interested and and shifting our energy to something that's new and innovative new moon in your sixth house innovative where for you guys you know Virgo so that just means the sixth house which is your house and it's about focusing in on your daily routine and just really getting that microscopic view of what's going on around you on a daily basis. And you can set new goals in there. And they can be relating to health or if you're interested in service to others. All right. Next, I'm going to move on. February 10th, Venus 
is in play again and she's making a trine aspect to Jupiter. Now this is again your fifth house to your first house and so I just love this energy. This is, pardon me, my banana. <laughs> This earth trine is very grounding and a lot has a lot to do with manifesting the things that we want. Venus, again, love, what we value. Jupiter amplifies anything it's connected to, especially in a very positive aspect as this is. While Jupiter is retrograde, that's not a problem. That means we won't go to overdo it. And this is, Jupiter is in your solar first house, so if you do have Virgo rising with Jupiter in there, you become larger than life anyways. And so I find this is, if you're not in a relationship, this will be actually a very nice opportunity to maybe, maybe meet somebody that's in, that might be important for you later. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, in the introduction on about the 13th and the 14th, don't fall under the pressure. Even if you've met somebody right before Valentine's Day, don't fall under the pressure of the Valentine's Day, everything has to be perfect date type of a thing. February 10th is a nice day. February 14th is a little bit tougher. All right, so I'm gonna move on. That February 10th is nice. I like this, of, of all of the signs and the placements of this, Virgo, those guys, you guys with Virgo rising, this is the nicest, in, in my opinion. I mean, they're all nice. That Venus Jupiter trine is, is excellent for creating what we want, but the placement of it for you guys, you're, you're the lucky ones this month in that regard. So. The next aspect is another lunar aspect, February 22nd, and that's the full moon in Virgo. And again, I'll put another video up, so if you're a subscriber, you'll get notified. But that's going to be in your first house. So what we want to do with the full moon in Virgo is to trim the fat, so to speak. You know, trim what doesn't need to be part of our lives so the things that are working will flourish a little better. All right? It's like cutting your hair, trimming it so the rest of it looks good, you know? I know. <laughs> All right, I'm going to finish up on February 28th, and on February 28th, the Sun and Neptune are conjunct in the sign of Pisces, and that is in your solar seventh house, the house of relationships and partnerships. So if there's anything kind of unusual and foggy going on in that sector, when the Sun comes through, and um, what it will do is it will, um, it will clear the deck, you know how if it's foggy outside, when the Sun comes through, it tends to burn the fog off. And that's what we can get the end of February. We can be a little confused and unknown at first, and then um, it, the energy of that will clear up. And we've got some interesting cards here. I pulled three cards for you guys. And the first one that comes up is heartache and loss. Well, I'm sorry about that. Um, but you know what? That's It's a number three, and we have Mars and Scorpio in your third house. And to me, what we can do is, if we have this, if, have, who hasn't experienced heartache and loss, right? But we have this and we can uh, move through this. So if we're looking at um, some of the other aspects here that are, are talking about uh, grounding and um, manifesting new relationships, then we need to definitely get over a heartache and a loss. All right. So I hope that's not the case for you, but that will be the case for some people. Uh, emotional withdrawal is the next card, and so when that card comes up too, um, I want you just to remember not to do that. I mean, there's always important to take time. If you're watching this in January, Mercury's retrograde, and um, because I will have these up in January, and that is a time to withdraw and contemplate and, and work through things that are important for us because it's going retrograde, and it will retrograde back over Pluto, and so make sure you watch that January video if you haven't already, because that Pluto and Mercury conjunction um, is very important. And I have a video out on Mercury uh, retrograde right now too, and it talks about the retrograde and over Pluto. And that aspect with Venus and Pluto is very, very important. So make sure you do take some emotional time, but it does not have to be a complete and total withdrawal from the system, all right? And then the seven card, it's, um, Standing your ground, and when that card comes up, it means just that. It's like feeling that you know you know what it is you want, you know what it is that you need in a relationship, whether you're in one or not. You know, standing your ground and, and just really claiming, and that's the earth energy of some of these transits too. It's like being strong and controlled and comforting and comfortable in yourself. And so with that, 
I think that's what I'll do. That's what we. That's what we've got for today. So. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I've said that like four times. And uh, come to my website. I have classes, mentorship programs. I do a lot of stuff on the internet. I'll use Skype and other um, services like that so we can see each other and you can see what we're talking about. So if you have never learned um, astrology one-on-one, this is a wonderful opportunity. I have only so many spaces available every six months so we're at four i have four left right now so maybe you'll be the one thank you for um thanks for listening lots of love and namaste